Echo Lima 87. This is 100 watts and a wire. October the 9th, 2024 is a day that Sarasota will never forget. Hurricane Milton, a Category 3 storm, crashed upon Southwest Florida and changed the landscape. It changed people. It changed the life many used to know. And even if you made it out of it, somewhat like me and my family, with minimal damage, let's get that out right up front. We had some tree and fence issues, but all in all, we fared well compared to many, many others. And I'm grateful for that. Hurricane Milton came and changed lives. And there is a very uh, strange bit of folklore about Sarasota. They, they've been uh, talking for many years about this sort of indigenous people folklore. That someone made a deal and hurricanes would not hit this area. Which is just silly. And if you lived by that motto, then, you know, you may have died by that motto. That is to say, it is not true. But for the first time in over 100 years, Sarasota had a direct hit. And I want to share with you some of the things and the decisions that my family needed to make here. And we had always said a direct hit. At a Category 3, we're going to go. But it's not that easy. Spoiler alert. We stayed. Okay, we stayed. And there's many different reasons for staying. And I know many people who were sending texts and family that were like, you got to get out of there. Please get out of there and go and run. And at one point, you know, that's like, it causes issues, if nothing else, about this particular part. You know, be really careful about how you send messages to people when they are about to get hit by a storm, say. Specifically, if you have friends down in wherever that is about to get hit, just telling them to go and run is not necessarily helpful. And this goes to friends and family who were doing that. Everyone knows you mean well, but geez, it's not helpful in a time of a lot of stress. Yes, it seems easy to tell somebody far away to run. And it makes sense to run. You run from the water and you hide from the wind. That is the basic instructions for people who would live in an area that could get a hurricane. It's not that easy. And you're saying, Christian, why isn't it easy, man? You just pack up the car and head. This was a storm that was hanging out over the Gulf of Mexico that was about to come straight across the whole state of Florida. There wasn't really a place to run. And if you were going to run and get out of here quickly, you would have had to do that probably the weekend before, several days prior. And the models, the spaghetti models that were coming out, were telling everyone, uh, look, this is a ratio of 100 miles. So there were times when we were thinking, southeast, we'll go southeast. Okay, so from Sarasota Southeast could be Fort Lauderdale, it could be Miami. Miami traditionally floods quite a bit. And this was a storm they were saying is really going to be hard to predict until it gets closer. All right, then for a while it was looking, it looked like it might go to Tampa, which is north of Sarasota, of course. Um, But unless you, you did not know that, it's about an hour in a car north, still within 100 miles. So you wouldn't want to go there. And just days before Hurricane Helene, let's not forget, Hurricane Helene 
has destroyed lives and property and people for generations to come. It just happened. And a side note, we're not hearing a whole lot of that. And I'm, I'm interested in hearing stories from that area as we go. Because we have a tendency, and I'm going to jump around a little bit, as is my way, this sort of train of thought. But I hope you'll deal with me. On the west side of North Carolina, in the mountains, people are there. And floating downstream. We're not hearing about that. We live in a society where, uh, and not to crap on the media, or to crap on them. You can do whatever you want with it. We're not hearing it much. If you're on TikTok or perhaps other social media outlets, maybe you are hearing about what's going on in the mountains in the West after Hurricane Helene. Broadcast news in this modern age, they seem to follow the next shiny disaster. And of course, Hurricane Milton was next and we sort of shift away and pivot away from the people who are literally drowning north of us. The citizens aren't forgetting about that, though. I mean, people aren't. We just, pardon me, people aren't. We just, we aren't hearing about it as much unless you were getting it on your, for you, on TikTok. Feels like I haven't been behind a microphone in quite a while. So if the voice uh, sounds a little rugged, this is being recorded on Sunday morning early. Sun has come up here in Sarasota, Florida, and I'm in my studio, which was barricaded with sandbags on the backside of our domicile. I'm saying that word because my 14-year-old daughter used it the other day, and I was like, oh, that's one. Domicile. I want to share a little bit more about this particular story, and I want to encourage you to share your stories with me. So reach out, because everybody has a story. We've got neighbors here uh, to our west, just next door, who decided to go, and they've lived here for decades. And I haven't even asked them where they went. We have another neighbor a few doors down, They decided to go, but most of the people on this block here in this area called Whitfield, it's in Sarasota, they stayed. Older lady across the street has a mom and she has to care for her. She can't get her out. Other people, what they say, hunkered down. And we did too. That's the short end of it. But the decisions to do so became more and more unclear as time passed. Let's go back a few days. We'll go back to the Sunday before Milton. And this is where my family decided we're going to get some sandbags. And we're thinking this thing is heading north. We had just been through Helene. Helene uh, stayed out over the Gulf west of us in the water. And went up the coastline, but and we were dealing with a lot of say debris, but not a full on. This was more all like a tropical event for us, but it was a hurricane. It was Hurricane uh, Two, I believe, as it passed us, and it was enough. Damn it! It went on and caused all of the destruction that you may or may not have heard about up north. And to the people who may be listening to this one day in North Carolina. Not a minute has gone by where folks like me forgot about you. Just want to make that clear. Because not enough people are talking. Those stories are not getting out. I'm not trying to be redundant. But I'd like to talk to those folks here in this platform. Sunday before we decided to go to what um, the community set up. I got to say Sarasota. And surrounding counties. So you got Manatee County and Sarasota County. Both of those counties helped you prepare. Sand, sandbags, and I posted a video on my TikTok with 
80,000 people saw this. It was about a 24, 22 second clip of people filling sandbags. And there was a calm, there was no hectic uh, nature about it. People were just filling sandbags. And you could feel like, okay, I'm not from here. This is my first real hurricane. The year before we had Idalia, and she was uh, meant to be a hurricane. She was downgraded as she came ashore and caused enough damage. That's brought tons of water into this area. Helene the same, because we didn't have a direct impact. Those outer bands hit us with a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Not a direct hit until Milton. Everybody was, uh, you could get 10 sandbags per car. And that's what we did. And uh, we put them along the backside of the house because sometimes when it rains really hard, we get some water. It's been really saturated. A lot of rain. The rainy season has kept us uh, saturated. And it's a problem because uh, big trees come down. I'm talking oaks come down. When the ground is that saturated and you have high winds like that. So at this point, it's early in the week and uh, we're preparing. The workplace is preparing for it. You know, people are getting their days off. You know, you're planning. We're going to have to close this day and this day. And uh, the conventional thought was that this is going to be heading north. Uh, looks to be anyway. But the models spread again across Sarasota. And there was a hundred mile. And you're thinking, isn't that the time to go? I want you to consider a couple of other things about running. First of all, I'm in flood zone X, they call it. All right. I'm about a mile, not quite a mile and a half from the bay, right? The bay side or the west. There are people who live right on the water. There are people who live behind them and the people who live behind them. So I'm in evacuation zone D. This was a 100 mile storm or no, it was going to come across Florida and there was a basic 100 mile radius that was going to be affected by this, right? So they again, running, where do you run? All the models were sort of spread out from north of Tampa all the way up to, not quite the Panhandle, but I'd say Big Bend up there in that area where it starts to bend on the map, all the way down. Maybe not quite as far as uh, Miami, but you know, of course, the south side of the storm is going to get a lot of uh, water coming that way, and Miami traditionally floods. Where do you go? How much time do you have? So part of you, it becomes... Uh, Winner takes all, I guess. You really should be thinking about the people in the A, B, and C who need to evacuate all the way up and down the coast. They need places to go. They need hotels to go to. They need places to stay. And then you're like, okay, we haven't been evacuated. It got to the point where if there is a mandatory evacuation for Zone D, of course we're going to go. We're going to go to shelter, though. Many shelters, again, in this area, Sarasota uh, and these counties, Manatee and Sarasota County, had shelters set up. They were either high schools, they could be bigger buildings that were built to withstand this sort of wind and pressure. So, yeah, waking up on Wednesday morning, knowing that there was no change in the direction and this was coming directly for Sarasota. It had never happened in 100 years. The people here were not sleeping on that or old folklore from the indigenous people saying that Sarasota, they made a deal so it would never get hit. People weren't thinking that way. And if they were, God help them. Wednesday morning came and nothing had changed. In fact, it became a cat five. It went back from Cat 5 to Cat 4 out there. Headed our way, no change. So Wednesday morning, my whole family had packed the go bag. We were heading to shelter. We're getting the text from the people saying, please run, please leave. It's not helpful. That is not helpful. You're trying to make the best decisions you can make for you and your family. 
There was really no place to go. People had been on the road for days. Fuel was hard to come by. We were gassed up. We've got two young children. And you can judge all you want. You can say, I would have taken these kids and get the hell out of there. You can say that. And there was a time on Wednesday morning when those go bags were ready to head to the car and we were going to shelter. There's a lot of elements and things uh, that would keep you here or make you run. What were some of my major concerns? Of course, we just bought this house. It has an older roof. It needs to be replaced probably in the spring. Certainly didn't want to replace this now during hurricane season. We just bought this place and it was like, uh, I can't do this right now. So there were some unknowns. The windows, uh, the older windows, they're not what you'd call hurricane windows. There was no plywood. If you could find plywood, you may not be able to find all the things that you needed. This is really a lesson in preparation. I learned so much with Hurricane Milton and being down here for the first time for real, real. From the sandbags to the distribution to the gasoline to the roots in and out of here, how the counties will react, how they distribute information. And you know what your house is made of. This is a block house. It is concrete. Your main issues are debris, perhaps coming through a window and bringing a lot of air into the house, which jeopardizes your roof. We spent uh, a lot of time keeping all the doors inside closed. All in all, we ended up staying, and so did many, many people on our block. And we thought, you know, given all the challenges and the decisions you have to make, the most reasonable choice to us would perhaps not be seen as a reasonable choice to others. Unless you lived here and you were dealing with the elements and you made a a decision based on that. Also, don't forget that moving out and moving to different places is expensive. I'm not talking about moving your house and leaving forever, ever. That's something like if you were super scared and you felt like you had it to go, then that's that's something else, right? But we're talking about if you are trying to travel, whether you're going to Fort Lauderdale or wherever, Right? This was the thing. Again, you look at the map and you look at the spread. Where are we going to go? Are you going to go north? There's not a lot. You could go to Georgia. You're going to wait. It's going to take you, I don't know, 15 hours or more to get up there. You could go way north if you chose. Hotels were unavailable. They should have been used by people in A, B, and C who had to evacuate, people who were closer to the water who needed to go, not somebody who said, well, we got a storm coming in about eight days. Let's go ahead. And you might think, hey, that's good preps. Let's book a hotel and uh, we'll get the hell out of town here. Many people needed to leave. They were forced to evacuate. Hotel rooms were putting a minimum of like three days or four days, some, 300 a night. And we're not talking about staying at the Four Seasons. We're talking about something less than that. 300 a night. You're going to have to pay gas. You got your food, right? So running also comes with a cost. For some, staying comes from a cost. But basically, to each their own. People were making decisions based on their situation. Many people here, in other words, if I haven't made it clear enough, not everybody has the funds to go ahead and stay and travel and spend twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 to run. So people stayed. And my situation is not unlike many, many other people. Some things were so, uh, totally destroyed in this area mainly the Keys, Siesta Key, beautiful places, beautiful people, nice people, I should say. 
I'm, I'm sure some of them are nice and beautiful. Those are the folks that had to leave first. You know you got to get out. You need to get yourself out of here. One of the salvations that I find in any storm situation or any emergency is the use of radio. Radio to me is like my right arm. It's so important. And a lot of folks don't know that amateur radio operators are the ones who are feeding the information to the news outlets. In fact, news outlets down here were looking for amateur radio people to help with communications and to help with information. These weather spotters, they're trained. I'm an amateur radio operator. I'm listening. Now, I wasn't listening to the high frequency bands because uh, if you're a smart amateur radio operator, you're bringing your antennas down. However, I was listening on my, what some who may not be amateur radios, we have these things called handy talkies. I can show one to you uh, on the video. Uh, Walkie talkies. People know them as, but the walkie-talkie is a bit different than this one. You have to be a licensed amateur radio operator to use these because they do reach and uh, allow you different privileges uh, on transmit. I'm listening to the locals. I'm listening to them coordinate. A lot of power outages, of course, but updates. And the updates are being distributed from the National Hurricane Center. They're being... Uh, rebroadcast or transmitted out to people who know about this. They're not coming with a ton of commentary. Oh, it could do this. It could do that. It did do it. Might. You know, that sounds like a nice melody, but that's annoying. It's, it's, you want the information and you want it quickly. You want it accurately. That goes from, we have power outages. Here comes the storm. We'll see you in the morning to search and rescue. Radio still matters very much to me. And that information, it it's essential to me. Living here in a neighborhood, being an amateur radio operator, allows me and my community a way to get out when cell phones are out. When you're trying to figure out if your loved one is okay. There is a way to transmit this information back and pass it along where it needs to go, whether we are in hospitals supporting or in the community at the Red Cross. Radio still matters. Your weather radio still matters. And I'm a very, uh, give me the information that we need. I don't need your talking heads. Just like the text, run for your lives and Get out of there. Please don't die. Like, come on, man. Knock it off. Knock it off. The best way to handle this is send a text message. Be safe. Keep me posted. Hunker down. I love you. Same way with the television. They just simply don't know until it gets closer and they're all distributing the National Hurricane Center information and that's what they should be transmitting. And then you make the decision based on your situation. How good is your house? Are you in a wood frame or are you in a block house? How's your roof? Can you cover the windows? Do you sandbag? Do you have a method? Do you have a a way out? Do you have an absolute time to get to the shelter? All of these things come into play, and it's a very personal decision, especially if you're taking care of uh, your animals, your elderly, your sick. Think about that. That's a, that's a big lesson. Radio gave me the information I needed to help make decisions. And I thank the amateur radio community and those operators who were here keeping us all informed. That way I can help inform my neighborhood, my community, and my family based on that. One of the things that were absolutely incredible, and I apologize, I just put my hand up on the, on the screen here. Um, 
I've been working since Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on cleanup. If I haven't mentioned this yet, uh, in my area here, in my town, my part of Sarasota, it was a lot of tree debris and fences. Fences, debris, sheds. I mean, things are everywhere. So the cleanup, I mean, you're talking about oak trees. And just to guess, I would say 80, 75, 80-year-old 80 oak trees, which are on the younger side. I've certainly seen some that are over 200 years old, but they are anchored in soil, not sand. There is a huge difference when saturation from the rain hits those roots and the weight of those oaks. They come down, and they can come down in far less than a hurricane. They can come down in the tropical storms. Enough wind can push those over because of that situation. And this one did. I'm not seeing a lot of broken glass where I am, but I'm talking trees, branches. Some of them I've seen because uh, we're basically on foot. Basically on foot walking because I walk a lot. And my family likes to walk a lot. So we get out and we do that. Driving around here is not an easy task. I mean, three days after you're able to get out, power lines are down. It depends on where you're trying to go. It really does. There's still areas here that are without power. I'm fortunate because our power lines are under the ground. They're underground and we're not too far from the airport. And that's one of those ones like a hospital. That power is going to go back up as fast as possible. And they did a really good job um, doing that. I mentioned video a minute ago, and I should apologize for the way this one looks. The sun is coming up with me. I'm recording this from the dark and the sun. I've got a, I've got a door open. It's beautiful here. The day after the hurricane brought cool air. I mean, sleeping with the windows open kind of stuff for people in Florida who've been dealing with uh, quite a bit of heat up until that point. If one good thing... A side effect, at least, is that Milton brought us a little bit of cool air, and it's stayed cool since. Getting back to getting around, it's not easy. You see businesses, you see people who have trailers and trailer parks uh, destroyed. I mean, just destroyed. Nothing, I mean, for a long time we've known if you're in a trailer or you live in a trailer park, and there's some really nice trailer parks here, get out. Just get out. It's like you're, even if you're not in um zone A, B, or C, get out, get out. And I can tell you, um, that's the best. I'm sorry. I'm not going to text you and be like, you're in a trailer house. Get out. You get out because that's not good. No bueno. But you get to see the town. You get to venture out. And, uh, we did, we needed some, uh, things to help with the cleanup. Just the new rake. I mean, basic, some basic things to help. And uh, you see the devastation. Uh, so Sarasota was not spared. It wasn't just the keys, just the people closest to the water. Everybody uh, is affected somehow. And if you made it out like my family did, consider yourself lucky. Speaking of the power during Hurricane Milton and after Hurricane Milton, naturally it went out uh, sometime Wednesday evening. The winds were picking up. It was just something to behold. The wind, I mean, I think I mentioned luck. As the luck sort of uh, came along into this, the winds were not as heavy as they were anticipated. There was 185 mile an hour winds out there in the Gulf at one point went to 150 and then it came in. Uh, I'm trying to remember. This has been a stressful week. Maybe it was 110, 115, 120. I don't know, but it luckily that was what we got and we didn't get any more than that. Okay. That's all I can say that with scientific accuracy. I don't have the numbers and we're still cleaning up, you know. The power, though, about 21 hours later, being underground, I think, helped. Proximity to the airport, I think, helped. 21 hours, we were back up. Neighbors tell me here that that's happened in the past. 
but it went right back out and they lost it for five days. So again, in your preps, you're thinking about your food, how many people you have to feed, when you'll be able to get to the market again, when will it open again, what water do you need, what supplies and sources, and it's for real, guys, it's for real. Again, we're very fortunate in this particular location during this particular storm. We stocked up, but the shelters were telling you, look, bring seven days worth of food and water for everybody and bring your dog and your dog food and your dog or your cat needs to stay in the crate. That was one that was sort of like, damn, that's, that's rough. That's rough. A lot of rough. Not taking it lightly. Uh, you're in the storm. You want to live. That's a lot better than dying. A lot of people did it. I want to talk to you a little bit about Hurricane Milton with the eye of the hurricane. In Hamilton, they sing in the eye of the hurricane. It's calm for a while. And I had a neighbor tell me that they uh, were not quite jealous, but in all their times, they'd never been in the eye of a hurricane. They wanted to be. A friend of mine, Ricardo, in Orlando, uh, to the east, on the east side of the state, he was checking in, and oddly, we still had some Wi-Fi. We had no power, but we had Wi-Fi, or whatever was up, giving us the ability to communicate. And he was like, okay, you're in the eye of the storm now. You can go outside and look up at the sky, take pictures, and share them on the podcast. And I was like, oh, no, man, that first half was a mother, like, scary, scary. Just trying to keep the kids calm and your wife calm or whoever calm. And do some assessment as you go. I mean, you know, water, you got water coming in, you got to handle that. And there's a lot going on. It's very stressful. It's, that's all I can say. But the eye of the hurricane, Hurricane Milton, came over Sarasota when it touched land, landfall into Sarasota. You could tell when the, you were in the eye, everything became so calm. I mean, like, Crazy calm. This was an experience that I hope to never have again. I, I mean, you know, I guess lucky again to be able to step outside. I walked out the garage door and you could hear the raindrops, but it was like everything was just stopping. It was calm. No crazy wind. Nothing. Not a sound just like this. After hearing hours and hours of storm, it was amazing. It was amazing. But then the second half of the storm, I did not know this until Ricardo tells me, everything turns backwards. After the eye of the storm, the winds change direction. And oh Lord, let me tell you, that side of it was a bear. It was a bear, and it was crazy and deep into the night. Deep into the night. It was the worst night of sleep you'd think you'd ever have. I don't think my kids slept. I don't think any of us slept. The next day, happy to be alive. I knew in the overnight time when it had stopped, and it could have been, I'm guessing, maybe four-ish in the morning where it was just like, okay, I guess it's gone. Because if I can describe the winds to you during the hurricane, it wasn't like a sustained 110 mile an hour wind. It was almost as if some entity somewhere was breathing in and then, I mean, the roughest winds. And when all that went out of the lungs, just a bit of a calm for the inhale. And again, it was like a pulse. It's the only way I think I can elegantly describe it was a pulse of winds coming. Not sustained, a pulse. Amazing in the eye of the storm. I don't need to do it again. I hope that we never receive a direct hit again. I hope none of you who may hear this in, in recent current times or down the line somewhere, I hope you don't have to. It is, though, amazing. 
in the eye of the hurricane. I want to touch on the community aspect of Hurricane Milton and just how impressed I was with my neighbors. People, you didn't have to ask. People came out early when the sun came up, just a bit after 7 usually at this part in October. Outside, picking up sticks, saying hello. Are you okay? Everything good. Are you good? Are you okay? That's what you hear in a lot. Everybody starts to make their way out. And you look down the street and you assess the damage. But you've already walked around your place, so you kind of know what you're dealing with. A lot of debris, a lot of fence damage, a lot of wood fence down here. So you can imagine what that looks like. But the neighbors, they would gather. You had no power. You had the sun. You had each other. And that was another reason why you knew staying you would have help because many others in the community stayed and they helped each other. They did. They really did. And for the most part, tree limbs, you saw people up and down the street dragging stuff to the, to the front of the house from the back to the front, because our County is going to come pick this stuff up probably in a a week's time, but you can't walk anywhere. Can't drive anywhere through Sarasota and probably many other communities without seeing tons and tons of debris, large oak trees, small uh, trees and debris and brush all lining the sidewalks. And nobody says anything because what are you going to do? You're not going to be like, oh, it looks crappy. Everybody, everybody has the same look. And it's been three days of cleanup, you know. And for others, it'll take much, much longer. Places on the Keys, closer to the water, those folks are going to be dealing with it for a long time. So they may never, ever, ever hear this, but uh, to my neighbors, I thank you, and I have thanked you in person for your kindness and your generosity. The human element during a storm, during times of trouble, forget about politics and all the things that tend to divide us. I'm not soapboxing, but you know, that stuff never come up. It never came up. Hey, who'd you vote for? I'm not helping you with that tree. That never comes. Who do you pray to? Never came up. Never came up. Many. Thank God. People say, thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God we were spared. It's the small mercies. Nobody came up and said, uh, hey, who, who you love? Didn't matter. What artwork do you have on the walls? What band do you listen to? I don't think so. I'm not helping him. It doesn't matter. It's the beauty of uh, humanity. None of that matters. It's your brothers and your sisters. And you're all in it. And it's a beautiful thing. So there you go. That's a snapshot. If you have any questions, please drop me a line. My antennas, uh, as an amateur radio operator, are down right now, except for I have one that's a long wire. It's an 80-meter antenna, and for those who are perhaps listening to this wondering, I don't know what you're talking about, 80-meter antenna, it's long wire, can be. It can be a vertical that goes straight up, however, but it, uh, it does really well with local communication, and I had one along my fence. If you picture an L of a fence, like where it connects and goes in one direction and the other, I had an antenna there on the top, only six feet high, and it made it through. My other is a vertical that's about 30 feet up in the air, and I took that down. So uh, there are some bands that I cannot listen or transmit on right now because I've got a, um, out of an abundance of caution, I have taken that down and kept it down because there is a... um, a tree in my neighbor's yard that needs to be inspected today. As a matter of fact, it has shifted. And instead of all the limbs being over my antenna, uh, they have moved and shifted toward it. And I'm going to keep that uh, on the ground until that tree issue is addressed. That's a snapshot into Hurricane Milton. Please don't forget what happened with Hurricane Helene, if you can, 
help somebody however you can. It not only feels good to be physically out there helping, but if you can't get there, look for a trusted source that of uh, people who can help the people. And by all means, you've got to pay attention to what's going on out there in the mountains. It's very, very difficult there as it is with people in Florida. We can't just switch and turn over and view another storm over another. We've got to remember the human aspect of what we are. And the west of North Carolina and those mountains, people have not eaten. They have not had power for days. Some people in Florida are, have been without power. We have to check on them and not just rely on uh, the sources that we get our information from. Look for the people, and you may find them mostly at this point on social media. And this is an invitation for any of the people I probably need to reach out specifically as I see them come up to come and talk to me. I think I want to put America on the air. That's what I want to do. I want to amplify these stories because it's important, and as you let me or may have listened to this particular story. There's many other facets and offshoots and many layers to my onion and my story. Each person you encounter will have another different experience and a set of circumstances that led them to make the decisions that they did make. During Helene, Debbie before her, and now Milton. And now we've got about six more weeks of hurricane season, so keep that in mind. If you have any questions, if you need any support or understanding, or you want to share your story, please drop me a line. Brothers and sisters, good luck the rest of the way. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.